The grassland and the surrounding area of Tal Chapar has become one of India's most popular birding destinations in the last 10 years. It attracts twitchers, the word used in birders' vocabulary for people who are mainly interested in extending their bird lists, and bird photographers alike. It is a hub for rarities and a good place to locate some of the most difficult birds of Western India, as well as some of its endemics. For photographers, it gives opportunities to shoot pictures of birds at close range, as the resident birds of this area of Rajasthan are not afraid of the local people, who are famous for their tolerance towards wildlife. Raptors are the major attraction for photographers here. With a little patience and time, a good photographer can obtain great shots of birds in action. Eagles, buzzards, falcons and especially harriers gather here in numbers seen only in a few other places in India. Formerly a private hunting reserve of the Maharaja of Bikana, Tal Chapar was established as a sanctuary in 1962 to protect the black buck, a type of antelope endemic to the Indian subcontinent. The hunting lodge of Maharaja Ganga Singh, built during the colonial era, now serves as a school. The sanctuary is named after the nearby Chapar village. It is a flat saline depression known locally as Tal, that has a unique ecosystem on the edge of the Tar Desert. Perched at a height of 300 meters above sea level, Tal Chapar Sanctuary, with almost flat and interspersed shallow low-lying areas, has open grassland with scattered acacia and prosopis trees. The word Tal means plain land, the rainwater flows through the low-lying areas and collects in the small seasonal water ponds. Some small hillocks and exposed rocks of slate and quartzite are found a few kilometers west of the sanctuary. These are called the Gopalpura Hills, and Dungar Balaji is the name of the temple on these hills. The area between the high ground and the sanctuary constitutes the watershed area of the sanctuary. The whole reserve used to be flooded by water during heavy rains, but with salt mining going on in the watershed, hardly any rain falling on the hillocks now reaches the sanctuary. The total area of the sanctuary is 725 hectares. There is a road going through its eastern side that connects Chapar village with Sujangar. This road divides the sanctuary into two parts. The condition of the road is very bad now and most drivers prefer to take a detour on another road that circles the smaller eastern part of the sanctuary. This route passes through Dewani village. The black buck is an antelope endemic to the Indian subcontinent. The male is arguably the most beautiful of all antelopes. It has long ringed horns and white fur on the chin and around the eyes, which are in contrast with the black stripes on its face. The coat of the male shows a two-tone coloration. While the upper parts and outsides of the legs are dark brown to black, the underparts and the insides of the legs are all white. However, females and juveniles are yellowish fawn to tan. The blackback is a diurnal antelope Three kinds of groups, all typically small, are female, male and bachelor herds. Males often adopt lecking as a strategy to garner females for mating. While other males are not allowed into these territories, females often visit these places to forage. The male can thus attempt to mate with her. As herbivores, black buck graze on low grasses, occasionally browsing as well. The black buck was once very common in the plains of the Indian subcontinent, and in numbers it has declined more than any other animal. During the 20th century, their numbers declined sharply due to hunting, deforestation and habitat loss. They are now protected under Schedule 1 of the Wildlife Protection Act, and they are largely confined to protected areas. Tal Chapar is one of the largest black buck sanctuaries in India, 
with more than 3,000 animals. Other mammals that can be seen here are Nilgai, or blue bull, a large antelope resembling a cow, Chinkara, or Indian gazelle, which is similar to female and young black buck, but is smaller and has a different shape of horns. Desert and Indian foxes can be seen near waterholes and in more open areas. The wild boar population has increased in the last few years. They can be seen in the grass and wallowing in waterholes in the hot hours of the day. Tal Chapar Sanctuary and its surrounding has become a hotspot for birding thanks to Mr. Surat Singh Punya, who was the Assistant Conservator of Forests in charge of this sanctuary and who retired on the 30th of June 2018. When Mr. Punya took charge in 2007, he found the sanctuary to be severely degraded, with over 50% of the grassland covered by invasive plant species that led to scarcity of food for black bucks. The forest department fed animals artificially. Mr. Punia and his team, with the support of senior officials from the forest department, took the following steps. Eradication of invasive plants, mainly Prosopis juliflora. Nurturing native species, including slow-growing species like Acacia, Salvadora and Zizifus. Rainwater management through contour bunding for even distribution of rainwater building a boundary wall and fence around the park that limits the access of domestic animals but allows black buck access. Creating a rescue center for injured animals. Constructing an admin block and forest rest house. Detailed recording of mammals and birds that has resulted in many new records. In February 2012, he sighted a flock of over 50 pale rock finches a new record for India. The results are that now 99% of the area is covered with native species of grass. Wildlife have food and water all year round. Rainwater manages to last through summer and numbers of black buck have increased by 50%. Chapar village, after which the sanctuary is named, is located in Sujangar Tesil in Churu district of northwestern Rajasthan, in the Shekhawati region of India, 210 kilometers from Jaipur, the state capital. It has a mixed population of Hindus and Muslims and is a major junction for traffic between Bikaner and Sujagar. Chapar village boards the sanctuary in its northeast. In the northwest, it is bordered by Charwas village and in the southeast by Dewani village. These villages support hordes of stray dogs which harass and even kill black buck. These dogs are mainly dangerous to young black buck and other mammals and young birds. The vegetation of the sanctuary is similar to that of most salt depressions in western Rajasthan. 34 palatable grass species are found here. The grasses include Cyperus retendus, Chloris quinquesetica, Cynodos dactylon, Chloris virgiata, and other grasses known locally as Dachab car. Some small trees of Kedri and Babul grow well near Kacha roads, canals, or ponds. Prosopis juliflora, an exotic tree from North America which grows easily in salty areas, has become a nuisance here. Every year the forest department attempts to exterminate it. There are three major birding areas in Tal Chapar. The first is the sanctuary itself with its vast grassland and waterholes. The sanctuary is open from sunrise to sunset. A small fee has to be paid at the entrance with a little extra for cars. Several guard posts are located in key points. This is one of very few protected areas in India which tourists can enter on foot and where it is possible to exit your vehicle. A guide is not necessary, and except for the obvious prohibition to drive or walk in the grass, birders can feel free. 
This is a major advantage over other protected areas in India. There are a few Kacha roads that circle and cross the grassland. Burning is done mainly while driving on these roads. Along some of them, dry poles have been set up so that birds can sit on them. With a car, it is usually possible to get very close to perching birds for good photos. The grass is home to many prey species, especially insects like grasshoppers that attract predators, such as kestrels and harriers. Lesser kestrel can be seen here. Very difficult to separate from common kestrel in the female, but as it is easy to approach close to these perching birds, it is possible to see the colour of the nails, the only absolute way to distinguish between these two female species of kestrel. Harriers are the most numerous raptors in the grassland, with Montague's harrier being the most common. They are usually the first raptors to take to the sky in the morning. They can be seen flying over the grassland in an impressive acrobatic way as they try to hunt reptiles, insects and small birds. After the hunt, they usually sit on the ground eating their catch or resting. Harriers are migrant birds that start to arrive here in September. They roost in colonies on the ground in the grass and in the evening many harriers from all over can be seen flying to the roosting grounds. The white-eyed buzzard is a summer visitor that can be seen here until October in large numbers. This bird is near endemic to the Indian subcontinent, with some populations in Myanmar and Afghanistan. By November, they disappear to their wintering grounds in South India. Long-legged and common buzzards replace the white-eyed buzzard in winter. Long-legged is more numerous and can be seen sitting on trees in all the birding sites. Seven different species of eagles are recorded in Talchapa. Tawny and short-toed eagles are residents. Indian spotted eagle has been split from the migrating lesser spotted eagle. It is probably a resident, but its status has yet to be studied. In October, migrating eagles start to arrive. Most common are steppe eagles, which are larger and darker than tawny eagles. Eagles prey on larger animals than falcons and harriers. They are usually after small mammals and reptiles, which are plentiful in the grass. The eastern imperial eagle winters here in small numbers. Usually juvenile birds are seen. Their colour is much lighter than steppe eagles as juveniles, while adults are much darker. Vultures come here later in winter. Eurasian griffon is the most common, and there are even some sightings of Himalayan griffons. Occasionally, Cenarius vulture appears in winter. The lagger is a large falcon resident in this area, and it is the first of our big five that attract twitchers to Tal Chapa. Like the white-eyed buzzard, it is near endemic to the Indian subcontinent. It is not very rare and can be seen in other places in Rajasthan and Gujarat and in other states, but here it will be very hard to miss. Photographers are mainly after this bird as it allows very close approaches. It resembles the Lana falcon of the Mediterranean and Africa, but is darker overall and has blackish trousers. The grassland is home to many other birds, which are not as obvious as raptors and have to be searched for carefully. They are usually observed feeding on the catcher roads in front of the car. Larks are the most common birds seen in the grass, followed by zitting cysticola, pipits, partridges and button quails. Monsoon is the best time to observe these birds. The monsoon is their breeding season and they come out of the grass calling and singing. After the rains, photographers have good chances to capture birds that are very difficult in the dry season. A few waterholes have been constructed in the grassland. 
Most of them are old and were probably constructed by Maharaja Ganga Singh. They are surrounded by large acacia and prosobis trees and collect water from the grassland. Later in the year they dry out. These water holes are great places to watch birds and animals coming to drink. They're a good place to spend the hot hours of the day. Herds of blackbuck and families of wild boar come here to drink. The best shots for photographers will be if they stay in the car at a safe distance and with a little patience they will be rewarded. Eurasian and red collared doves are the most numerous of the birds that come to drink, followed by babblers, starlings, rollers, partridges and small warblers and other passerines. Drongos and bee eaters do not drink from the water's edge, but rather dive into the water from the air. The trees around the waterholes are good for small songbirds, such as warblers and flycatchers. Lesser whitethroats and Blythe's reed warbler are the most common. Spotted flycatcher can be seen here during autumn migration in September. The waterholes near the sanctuary gate and the dry dead trees around them are the place to search for the next of our big five. Small flocks of yellow-eyed pigeon come here in winter. This bird breeds in Central Asia and winters in northeast Pakistan and western parts of Jammu, Punjab and Rajasthan in India. The bird has declined in numbers over the years, chiefly because of hunting. Tal Chapar and Jorbir near Bikana are the only known sites currently for this bird. The second major birding site is the salt pans west of the grassland. The entrance to this area is from Charwas village and driving through the village leads to Charwas lake which is a big water tank and has a population of ducks in winter. Nearly all the species of common migrating ducks can be seen here. Beyond the lake there is a large open area with scattered grass. Large numbers of demoiselle cranes are usually present here in winter. They start to arrive in late September and their numbers increase as the winter arrives. They seem to be little bothered by human presence around them. Sometimes this area is partly covered with water. When it is, many different kinds of water birds, like river tern, bar-headed goose and several different kinds of ducks and waders can be seen here. The dry area is good for cream-coloured corsa, a bird for which Rajasthan and Gujarat are the easternmost part of its distribution. There are some wooded areas between the grassland and the salt pans, which can be good for scrub birds. In the evenings, large numbers of starlings and miners gather here to roost. Short-eared owl can sometimes be seen here roosting on the ground. The power lines are good for perching birds. In early autumn, many migrating blue-cheeked bee-eaters and European rollers can be seen. This area is very large and there are many big wells around. Indian eagle owl is a resident here. The salt pans themselves are good for waterfowl like flamingos and waders. Here is the place to search for vagrants. Both species of phalaropes, grey and red-necked, have been recorded here. Stolichkas, or white-browed bush chat, one of India's most enigmatic birds, should be searched for here. This bird is found in winter, and there is little known about the behaviour and migration patterns of this species. It makes a local migration, 
It is possible that his breeding in Jorbir, in Bikana district, only 130 kilometers away, in similar habitat where birds are observed between July and November. Stolichka's bush chat is endemic to the Tar Desert in Rajasthan and Kutch area in Gujarat and adjoining areas in Pakistan. It is nowhere common and it is very high on the wish list of any twitcher that visits Western India and it is the third of the big five. Our fourth big five member is Sociable Lapwing. It is the most difficult to find and the only one which is listed as critically endangered. It breeds on open grassland in Russia and Kazakhstan and winters from Sudan through the Middle East to Northwest India. Reasons for its decline are unknown. A few birds are seen here almost every winter. They usually arrive in November, sometimes staying for a few days and sometimes for a few weeks. They should be looked for in open areas in and out of the sanctuary, mainly between Dewani and Chapar villages. Sometimes they are found together with Indian courses. Bird tourism is slowly developing in Tal Chapar. Sujangar is a small town 10 kilometers away that has good and cheap accommodation. Currently, there are two operators that offer accommodation and guiding near the sanctuary itself. The forest rest house is now closed for tourists due to a Supreme Court order that suggests that all forest rest houses in India are instructed not to permit private tourists to avoid disturbance to wildlife. Let us hope it will open soon as it is located in the entrance to the sanctuary and has great views over it. Indian peafowl are plentiful near the rest house and it is a good place for brown chat, another common endemic bird of the dry areas of Rajasthan. Raptors Inn Guest House is located on the road from Chapar to Chawas, within walking distance of the sanctuary gate. It is a family homestay and has five rooms. Atul, the owner, speaks good English and can guide birders and photographers in the sanctuary and all the birding sites. Bird's guest house in Dewani village has three rooms. It is perfectly located bordering the smaller eastern part of the sanctuary with a great view from the roof over its grassland and woodland. The property borders a large artificial water body where birds can be seen drinking. Prasad Anand is from Dewani. He established this guest house three years ago and now he guides his guests in Tal Chapar and its area. Bird's guest house is within walking distance of the Dewani Gaushala, our third birding hotspot of Tal Chapar. A Gaushala is a non-government organization dedicated to taking care of abandoned and sick cows. In Rajasthan and in most parts of India, each village has a Gaushala that is managed by the local village community. The Gaushala area is the grazing ground for cows owned by Gaushal Society in Chapar. It is located just outside Dewani village, northeast of Tal Chapar sanctuary. It is open woodland dominated by Prosopis cineraria trees, locally named Kedri. The trees are old, but small in size, not over five meters in height. There are a few water bodies in the Gaushala area designed to serve the cows. Blackbuck are plentiful here. They seem to be very used to having people around. Reptiles like monitor lizard and snakes are easier to see here than in the sanctuary. This is the place to see the main prey species of Tal Chapar. The sandy ground covered with short grass is home for gerbils and spiny-tailed lizards, the main prey species for lager falcon, eagles and buzzards. As the day gets warmer in the morning, spiny-tailed lizards can be seen in large numbers coming out of their burrows to graze. This kind of lizard is totally vegetarian. Where the Gaushala area starts, just out of Dewani village, there is a carcass dump and Egyptian vultures are usually present along with other birds such as common hoopoo. Hoopoos feed on insects that infest the carcasses. 
The Gaushala area is good for open woodland birds and for raptors. Tawny eagles and lagger falcons seem always to be around. With little searching you should find Shikra and with luck red-necked falcon. Rufus-fronted Prinia, a common endemic to the dry areas of India and Pakistan, is common here. Bayback shrike, small minivet, orphean warbler and yellow-crowned woodpecker can be seen in the forest areas while larks and pipits, especially long-billed pipit, can be seen in more open areas. Indian spotted creeper, the last of our big five, lives among the Kedri trees. It was only in 2010 that spotted creeper was separated into two different species, the African and the much less common Indian spotted creeper. This decision resulted in many twitchers coming to Tal Chapar to add this bird to their list. It is a resident, and although it is difficult to spot this very well camouflaged bird, it should be located within a few hours' search. Not more than six birds have ever been spotted together. Indian spotted creeper is endemic to central India and is nowhere common, and the Gaushala area of Talchapar is the best known place to search for it. The Gaushala Society of Talchapar is very aware of the wildlife on its land and protects it. A small fee of 200 rupees is charged to visitors. A guard who takes care that no disturbance will be caused collects this fee. Both tour operators Atul and Prasad Anand have very successful businesses and they have a lot to gain from Tal Chapar continuing being a birding hotspot. Let us hope that community-based conservation with bird tourism and efforts from the Forest Department will benefit the wildlife of this remote area of Rajasthan. <laughs>